All right, all right. All right. Good afternoon, Awakened Nation. Thank you for being a part of this prayer room. Our heart, our drive is to get people back to just conversation with Jesus because that's our whole thing. We think it all starts and ends and begins. Everything should be centered around prayer. Prayer should be our first thing, our last thing, and it should be the go-to for anything that we have. And we're all excited about it. And this is very interactive, guys. So feel free to comment below and we'll interact with you along the way. And also help us grow this platform because our whole vision is to get our praying, praying back out into the world. Because we've had people from all around the world. So share, share it and invite people. Let's get people on board. That's the greatest thing that you can do to help us get the prayer out there. So we, we can do, do, do this collectively as I stumble my words and try to bear with me. But we've got... <laughs> We've got always, like always, with us, Timmy, Leah, and also love to introduce my brother and friend, Pastor Langley Shazer. He's <laughs> got an awesome opportunity at New Life International Church, and he's going to be here praying with us, and we're going to be praying for him because of some exciting things in your world, world Langley. And I just wanted to kind of lift people up and especially get, help you get your book out. But I ain't going to go much more into it. Do you want to kind of give a brief, brief rundown of what else is going on in your life, Langley? Oh man. Uh, yeah, thank you again for allowing me to be here. I think we've, uh, we've been trying to to make this happen, at least on my end. I've been trying to get in with you guys. So, Timmy, Leah, Joe, thanks for, for having me and, and this opportunity to be here. Uh, yeah, just real briefly, guys, you know, some of those who have been following me know that uh, I just re released a, a new book. We did the pre-order sale. The official book release will be on Friday. And that book's titled 40 Days and Nights, A Journey Through the Wilderness. And what it is, an autobiographical account of my three most prevalent wilderness journeys. Now, when we talk about the wilderness, we're talking about that place of uncertainty, that place where you don't know what's happening and you don't know what God's trying to do in your life. And you're trying to seek him out and, and reconcile yourself to yourself and to your purpose. And so this is the times where he really shifted my life and shifted my trajectory. Uh, now, the book is a short book. It's not a long read at all. And that's by design because I want it to be something that you guys can refer to. I want it to be a tool and a resource and not just something you read and put on a shelf. Uh, it's also not as much about my life. My, my life gives it context and it gives it some relatability, but it's more about the scriptures that I that I utilize and how those scriptures apply to the experiences that I have. So the, the goal is to lift God up more uh, than myself and show that when you are walking in Christ and that you are following, and like I said in my video yesterday, when you're believing, listening, and acting, God's going to do a great thing. Uh, so yeah, we're very excited about that and very excited about the, the response that I've had from the book because it's been fantastic and it's been a humbling experience and, and I'm looking forward to the official launch uh, or official release rather of the book itself. Um, and there'll be some other things coming down the pipe, guys. More books, more stuff going on. So don't don't worry. You haven't missed anything. Um, we'll be sure to make sure that we have as much as we can possibly offer for everybody. Absolutely. <clears throat> Where can they go to, to find your book at Langley so we can give you? Yeah, it's, it's going to be on Amazon. Um, currently, there are, there are actually five other offerings uh, on Amazon. So you can just put my name in, Langley Shazer, and there's uh, some poetry collections. There's a men's devotional, uh, 60 Days of Casual Word, that uh, I, I'm just very fond of. That was an amazing experience to write that as well. So that's also available on Amazon. Uh, you guys can get those. They're out currently. So please feel free to go out there and get one, uh, you know, get all of them, whatever whatever your heart's desire is. Uh, I'll still be releasing poetry. I belong to a lot of poetry groups. Um, I'll still be releasing poetry collections. I'm doing some collaborations coming up. So there'll be some really neat things peppered into some of these uh, more influential works that I'll be putting out. Mm. Absolutely. Mm, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting for sure. It's exciting. And it, as our name entails, the big thing we want to do in this room is to pray for people. And that's one thing that I do want to pr do is pray for you, Langley, specifically in this moment. So your book can go out and it can bless people and it can bring people closer to Jesus. So I'm going to kick off this prayer. And uh, Timmy, Le Leah, if you feel called in your spirit to pray afterwards, feel free to as always. And I'm going to kind of kick us off and just get this started. Father, thank you for the brotherhood and the friendship Langley has to offer. And just this is truly a man searching after your heart, Father. I ask you, please be with his book. Get it in the hands of people who really are searching and who really need it. 
uh, allow this to change lives because that's not what you want. That we know that's what you want to do. Ultimately, is change people's lives in a radical way so they can see things in a different way through your lens, through your perspective. And I know that's one of these hardest to get people to you, Jesus. We just lift him up tonight in this opportunity that we've been given through this prayer room and just kind of just bring awareness to the issues that he's just really representing and how he just wants to focus in on you, Jesus. Lift this book up, send it out, send the, his word out, and especially in uh, Langley's new position at New Life International. Please be with him also. Help lift him up and guide people to you because that's our hearts here is so you can be known and get back to that conversation. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for every opportunity you give and thank you for Langley and the blessings that he has been in my life personally. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Man. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's powerful, man. Guys, prayer, prayer works. For everybody who's watching this, anybody who watches later, prayer works. And, and one thing I used to say is that prayer is the only thing that I know that works um, outside of just God and his awesome power and authority. So, uh, Joseph, man, I thank you for this room. I thank you for being obedient to, to start this room because prayer is a powerful thing. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is something that will change your life. It will change the way you look at your life. It will change the things that are happening in your life. It is real and it works. So I do want to reiterate that, you know, if you, if you need prayer, come into this room, you know, reach out to people who that, that you know can, that can pray for you and, and don't be afraid to pray yourself. You know, prayer is simply communication. And the Bible says that sometimes you're not going to have the words, but you can just moan and groan and the spirit's going to intercede for you. So don't worry about not knowing how to pray for example just just say what you need to say talk to your father and he will hear you wow oh uh, that's kind of awesome there's two different directions i want to go with this but i think that's a beautiful segue to the spiritual attack that me and timmy and leah and Haley have been under this week man it's been crazy so i really want to start this night off because we all need it is about uh, just us being able to share a little bit of what we need prayers for. And uh, I think a lot of times we have to be willing to admit, hey, we're not perfect. We need prayers, too. But we get that yeah. attack in a huge way. And he's been attacking all of us. And kind of to kick it off, uh, one thing I do want to pray for, and you all can feel late, whoever wants to start this prayer, is Haley, who's normally with us. She is traveling all the way up here from Florida and be with us tomorrow night for the prayer vigil. It's a long drive for her, and Timmy's excited. Of course, we're all excited for yeah, Haley to get to, get to join us, so it is big. But she is traveling, and man, has she been under spiritual attack. I guess yes, yeah. everything the enemy, enemy can throw at her, he's been throwing at her. And I know me and Leah and Timmy all have been kind of praying around her and encouraging her and just letting her know that God's got bigger plans for her. And she just feels really letting her spirit to come up here and be a part of what we're doing in a, a physical way through this prayer vigil that we're doing tomorrow night. So we definitely want to start our prayer prayer gathering by kind of praying for her. And uh, I just feel like, Timmy, I think you need to start this. And Leah, I know you've got some powerful prayers and definitely <laughs> allow you to kind of kick in and lightly. Anything that you got to say, also feel free. But let me just start us off. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, I thank you for this day, Father. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you be with Haley right now, Father God, Lord, as she's driving to come to come to Tennessee, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for safe travels, Father, Lord. Help her just worship you in the car, Father. Help help her just. Um, just guide her, Father, is what I'm saying. Guide her, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, that your will be done and on our own. Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I, I do want to um, um, pray over uh, Haley, but before I do that, as Langley, as you were talking about your book, uh, you and Joseph Beckworth, and I was just kind of listening, and what I saw in the spirit realm was um, your booklet or your book being passed around in um, circles of multitudes of people, maybe like a small groups or home groups. Um, mm. And it's like actually five church, um, and, and growth coming from that. I, I got a vision of underground churches as well. Um, struggles and things like that so i just hope that will encourage you uh, that, that i really believe the lord's going to use uh, your gift of right um, thank you and, and the um, so i'm just really excited for you um i've got it written down i'm just gonna keep on praying for that after this ever that you are uh, um, something great uh, and i Lord, for that because we need more laborers in the field that's absolutely true 
Uh, thank you. I, re I receive it. Uh, uh, great. Awesome. I'm glad you do. Um, right now, I am. I have been heavy in Psalm 91, so I'm just going to pray that psalm. And um, okay. it's one of my favorite things to do because when we pray the word, we know we're praying the will. Uh, we don't have to question it. We don't have to doubt it. And I, all of us um, here, uh, and Lingley, you probably have some attacks coming. Anytime you advance in the kingdom, you meet, you meet up with a with a new demon. Absolutely. Um, um, so we're just going to, if you'll receive this prayer, I'm just going to pray the psalm, and I'm going to try to personalize it as, I got, as I'm going along, and this is just what I feel directed to. It goes out for him. Joseph, uh, anybody else that's listening and uh, need to hear this because I think you forget for playing for God. So, Father, I thank you that your word says that whoever dwells in the secret place of the most high will be in the shadows of the Almighty with you, Lord, and that we will say that you are our and our fortress, and in you we will trust that surely you will deliver us from the snares of the fowler and that the, the perilous pestilence, Father, that um, you will cover us with your feathers. And I love that, Lord. I love just the, the imagery of that. It reminds me, Father, of how you wanted to gather Jerusalem like a hen, you know, gathers his chicks. And I just keep thinking about that mental image. Um, and so I thank you, Father, that you will cover us with your feathers. And it is under your wings that we take refuge and that your truth is our shield and our buckler. And I, I just, oh, your truth sets us free, God. The truth sets us free. Hmm. And that we're not going to be afraid of the terror by night. And I think about that because of terrors that do come in the night. But we're also nor of the arrows that fly by the day or the pestilence that walk in the darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at the noonday. And although a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, it shall not come near us. That only with our eyes will we look and we will see the reward of the wicked because we have made you God, our Lord, who is our refuge. You are the most high. It is your dwelling place. No evil shall befall us, you say. Nor any plague will come near our dwelling. Thank you, Jesus. For you, O oh God, you give angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. And it is in their hands that they bear us up so that we don't dash our foot against a stone. We will tread upon the lion and the cobra, you say, and the young lion and the serpent we shall trample underfoot. And that is such a beautiful imagery, Lord, when you understand what those things signify. And it, this happens because we have set, he has set his love upon us. Just let that sink in for a minute, guys. He has set his love upon us and therefore he will deliver us mm. and he's going to set us on high thank you lord because he knows our name mm. Mm. Yes. thank you lord and that when we call upon him he's going to answer us yes. and he says he will be with us in times of trouble that he's going to deliver us and he's going to honor and we're going to honor him. He's going to honor us. I'm sorry, with long life. And he's going to satisfy us and he's going to show us his salvation. So I want to proclaim that out to everybody. Think upon those, read that Psalm and just start proclaiming that Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you father, that there is nothing, absolutely nothing that is above your word. And that is the thing that we can always turn to when we are in despair, when we are scared, when we are fretful, even when we're hopeful, when we're looking for the answer. Yes, God, you talk to us in many, many ways. You, you, your spirit has been poured out and many will prophesy because you use us that way. 
But Lord, we know that your word is absolute. We don't have to question it and we don't have to doubt it. And there's nothing that's going on in this world that your word doesn't cover. <laughs> and I am just so happy about that because God, I would be lost without your word. I was lost without your word because Father, you are the word. There's no lie in you. There's no darkness in you. All you want for us is good because you're good. And if we would just lay down our own selves, if we would just crucify our flesh day after day, moment after moment, and seek you first, all these things you say will be added unto you. Mm. Good. Every good thing that you have in store for us, you will give unto us because you know the plans and they're good. All we have to do is trust in that. That little itty bitty mustard seed of faith that moves those mountains. I keep thinking about this week too because there's so much going on that we just need just a little bit of faith. And that hope that never lets us down. Right. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you sent your one and only son to die in our place to take the burdens of our sins and carry them to the cross. Thank you, Father, for covering us in your blood. Thank you, Lord, for descending to hell and defeating it and raising again to showing yourself alive and well and for now sitting at the right hand of the Father, continually making intercession for us. I love you, Lord. Ask you, Father, to be with Haley as she travels. I know you are. I don't even have to ask. I'm just going to thank you. Thank you for getting her through it. Thank you for putting her in my life. Thank you, Father, that she's coming against the wills of others, the wickedness that came against her, and all sorts of forms and fashions to prevent her. But, Lord, she had that knowing knowing that she needed to be here and she fought hell's door to get here. I ask Lord. you, Lord, to bless her on her journey. Keep her alert and keep her awake and then let her arrive just refreshed and renewed. And uh, I know you're going to show her many things while she's here. And I'm excited to hear what all that's going to be because great is going to be your testimony out of all of this and why we're gathering tomorrow. Great will be your name in all the land. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Amen. Something on my spirit real quick. Lately, I know I know you've got a Bible study here in a little bit, but the, yeah. kind of the ongoing trend, like especially last night, no, a huge thing that God spoke to me is a lot of times we do we, that a little bit, like the faith of a mustard seed will move a mountain, but then he also told me a little bit of doubt will also create a huge valley in us a lot of times because it can That's grow, right. it can be. And I know, and I know, man, you've been with each other through the ups and downs. We've shared our, our struggles and the hard times and the good times and everything else. And what I really feel called to is just kind of ask you, just kind of point blank: Are there anything we can be praying for you in in specific for before you have to get off, so we can we can kind of be your prayer warriors alongside of you on this journey? Because I know when you're on to greatness, enemy's going to attack you in greater length. So we definitely want to make sure you're prayed up before you get off here. So anything at, at all that we can be praying for you for. If you will, just be, be in prayer that he continues to change my heart and change my perception, that he continues to work on me, right? Because mm -hmm. we know that he's going to, to be out in front of us. We know he's going to be doing a great work. We know that he is going to be victorious and that the enemy can only delay, but he cannot destroy. But the work is on the inside. And the work is internal. The work is how do I continue to love unconditionally? How do I continue to be confident in the face of adversity? How do I continue to be able to move when I don't feel like it, when I don't feel good, when I don't want to, when I know, when I don't think anything's going to matter? And those are the things that we all be praying for. But those are things specifically because as we move into this next season, something that we just talked about is when you elevate, right, the attack elevates. Mm -hmm. Because of that, it requires elevated work. Right. So you've got to work harder. You can't. I say this all the time. You can't beat level 12 with level nine effort. That's right. right. 
Uh, right. So, you know, just be praying that I, I get to level 12 effort uh, and level 12 commitment. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Whew, that's a, that was powerful. Yeah. And that, that can speak to all of us. I know for yeah, me everybody. specifically, man, I know for so long, God's kind of called me out on that on several different things. He said, you're just you're you're just not leveling up like I need you to. You yeah. need to start putting into it, and it's been a growth season for me. And I'm finally awakens growing in mighty ways. And I think it's because I finally just allow God to grow me to those next levels and just really see well the the mistakes and the misplaces that I was going into. And I'm I'm trying to do better. It's still a work in progress. But he's got an amazing team surrounded by me: Tammy, Leah, Haley, and whoever else God brings. So it's really encouraging, but yeah, we definitely want to be praying for you to, to get to that next level. So yeah. I, next level praying, I think next yeah. level prayer is what, what you need yeah. right now. Uh, you have um, family, wife, children. I've got two kids as well. I've got, I've got two kids. They're still, they're still in the, in the States. Okay. Okay. So, but guys, right. Let me, um, if you guys will permit me, um, let me pray for you guys because I've got something in my spirit when Leah was praying. I, I just want to just want to pray over you all for a moment before I take off because I do have to get the Bible study. And I, I want to okay. thank you again for allowing me to be here. But, um, you know, something that's just really on my heart. We're talking about these these spiritual attacks. We're talking about this warfare. And so I just want to be praying against that real quick before we all, before I part with your all's company for the evening. Absolutely. All right. Father God, we just thank you for all that you are, for all that you are, that you have been, and all that you're going to be for us. Father God, you said that no weapon formed against us will prosper, but you didn't say no weapon will be formed. But then you also mm -hmm. gave us armor. You also gave us victory. You also gave us an army of angels. You also gave us a hand, a hedge of protection. And we just thank you for that right now. We just thank you that mm -hmm. even though the enemy prowls like a lion to seek who he can devour, he can only seek because we are in your hand. You have already mm -hmm. excluded us from him. You have already kept us protected from him. You said that you will open a door that no man can shut and you will shut a door that no man can open. And right now, we believe that you're going to open the doors and pour out the window, the, the blessings from the windows of heaven, Father God. We know that you are going to do a great and wonderful thing, not only in this prayer room, but in each individual life of everyone who not only is here praying, but in here listening. Father God, you said when two or three are gathered, you are in the midst and the Holy Spirit is here right now. You can move through the digital medium. You can move through social media. You can move mm -hmm. through emails. You can move through text messages and we are believing right now that even in this moment as we are all in different locations that your spirit is hovering moving yes. and moving mm -hmm. forward and we ask with expectancy right now father god that you will continue to move and loose the chains of bondage on any and everyone to be the sound of my voice right now mm -hmm. that as Haley drives that she will be encouraged that she will be uplifted yes. that she will be liberated from her situation and that whatever is coming against her will fall by the wayside as she drives past mm -hmm. him on the side of the road father god that we want to Continue to be everything that you are called to be. She is working, operating in your power, in your authority, on your path, and in her calling that you have put on her life, Father God. And you reward that. And you reward everybody right now that's in this room for that, Father God. So I just want to thank you again for everything that you are doing, everything that you have done, everything that you are going to do, Father God. I ask that you will continue to keep your angels encamped around them, encamped around this platform, encamped around the people who are listening, encamped around people who are being encouraged because we know that the world that we live in is quick to destroy and quick to hinder and quick to bind, but we loose and we destroy all those yokes of bondage right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just want to ask before I part company with them that you will continue to bless them, continue to glorify them, continue to magnify them them in the in the in the calling that you have had so it can continue to magnify you in this world so that's all these things in amen. jesus precious name amen 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 thank you Langley. thank you i hey, appreciate you guys and you all have a great great night um i do want to plug in i am doing the resurrection series um so we'll be talking about the actual today is step one of what the process of resurrection looks like for our lives. So that would be on live um, at 9 p.m. If anybody can catch that. Terrific. And uh, of course, you guys can watch them later on. But I did want to throw it out there because my study Bible study, I'll be going into my Bible discovery moment as well. So if you guys have a chance to catch that. We appreciate you. Um, and Joseph, again, thank you for, for allowing me to be here. Timmy, nice to meet you. Leah, nice to meet you. Too. I'm sure we will definitely be uh, in contact more often. So, uh, guys, as always, let's change the way that we think. So we change the way that we live. Until next time, you guys stay blessed, and everybody else stay blessed as well. Thank God you, Michael. Bye. Pray for next level, brother. Next level. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. And.
that's kind of the Waking Nation out there. That's kind of we, we'd love to start having more guests on, that kind of just kind of spotlighting some people, so we can kind of pray around people and everything else, and expect some more of that kind of happening in the future as we have guests on for moments and everything else. And uh, yeah, we just love getting to see what God's doing because I mean, this is a nation. This is a group gathering. It. This is a move. This is not into single individuals and just awaken. It's how God's moving. So we definitely want to highlight people who are out here who are doing the grind because uh, kind of I think Leah kind of highlighted that a little bit earlier because we need workers out here. I mean, the fields are rich and they're ready for harvest. God wants workers out here, so we definitely want to point out workers and kind of be praying for them. So we're excited for what God's going to do through Langley and everybody else who gets to be a part of everything we're doing. I'm, I'll be right back, guys. I want to get me a drink of water. So I'll be right back. All right. Do we have it right. on cue for a prayer? Let's see. Nobody posting anything yet, but let's see. Yeah, some people were just praying for Haley. And uh, for you out there, we definitely want to be praying for you. Comment below. Uh, let us know how we can be praying for you along the way because we definitely, throughout it, we're, we will take time to pray for you all individually. We want to pray for the bigger things, but the bigger things are also part of our, each individual here, what you all represent. And you're part of our tribe, part of this bigger nation. Thanks. So we definitely want to be praying for you. So just let us know how we can be praying for you. And we'll definitely take a moment to pray for you. So, yeah, we be encouraged that uh -huh. prayers do work. Uh, one of the things, definitely Haley on the way, and we got to pray for her, and definitely I believe in God's going to get her up here safely because I think God's got a purpose to bring her up here this week and some things that he's working out. So we're excited for that. We're excited for everything God's doing. Like I said, uh, and I, I'm kind of be the first to say that we need prayers ourselves i need prayers a lot of things going on a financial burden some things that we need to get together to get keep this ministry moving forward and just some different things that i just need prayers with personally and just attacks from the enemy like kind of like what we shared i know the enemy has no power outside of what god gives him but also we know that sometimes we have to go through th certain things so god can get us to where we need to be so i definitely don't want to hide away from the things that the struggles and temptations that i have to go through to get to the other side but definitely be praying for me uh, that's kind of my my ask for y'all how you can be praying for me and uh, i don't know timmy Leah, if you want to throw some more things out that they can be praying for you over and we'll get to some prayer requests down below. Yeah, pray for me. Um, I just, today, I woke up early because I had to, because I was looking for the key, and I'm just tired. <laughs> you just tired? Yeah. yeah. Especially with your schedule, huh? Hmm. That's like, especially with your schedule going on? Yeah. Okay. I guess pray for energy again. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're going to pray for your uh, sweet sleep. You know, yeah. touch on sweet. Because that's the promise of the Lord. So, um, you know, that he gives his beloved sweet sleep. Amen. So, uh, we'll, we'll uh, that's how I'm going to pray for you on that. And um, as far as me, I. I just ask for continued uh, grace as I uh, start walking on my foot again. Um, yeah. I, I notice that there's, and it's it's typical of it, and it's fine. It's not a big deal, but a little tenderness and swelling because you know they. Uh, I had to, part of my heel bone had to come off, so there's just a lot of um, still healing that's going on. But I am basically about six weeks ahead of schedule as far as walking. So, you know, I know God awesome. got this, um, but I also almost stumbled today, and that would have been bad. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, me just continued healing. Um, there's, uh, I have on a very personal note, and I'm going to detail about my daughter that uh, is speaking to me right now, and it, that hurts my heart. So uh, she needs, um, she needs prayer. Yeah, she's struggling with a lot of things, and I don't hold anything against her. Um, you know, I was her one, so uh, I know God will get her through it and everything. But uh, you no, know, it, it's a little hard when the holidays come up, and so uh, right. other than that, 
you know, God's got me on just about anything else I can think of. Amen. Yeah. And uh, and she's not here for good reasons, but another person of the heart, she's been a kind of influence in this ministry and everything else is Robin. I know she just recently lost her father, so we definitely want to be lifting her up in, in prayer. And uh, I just really feel led to just start a prayer, a verbal prayer for her right now. So I just want to pray for Robin right now and everything that she's going through. Uh, Father, thank you for the blessings that Robin has given, just her heart and her passion to see people just have a relationship with you. It's encouraging. It's inspiring. And we know hard times are coming. I know the death of her father is hard for that whole family. Uh, it's going to be a missing piece, but we also know that it's also a celebration. It's a miraculous thing because now he gets to walk alongside of you, Father. He gets to be with you, and that's a celebration. When we, It's a homecoming that he gets to experience. So even though he'll be missed here, we want to always celebrate that, but also that leaves a hole in that family that it's, it's hard that they'll never be filled, but they need that comfort. The only comfort that comes from you in a supernatural way, so be with that family. Be with them all. Be with Robin and just inspire her and just give her the strength to keep moving on and seeing the greater things in your plan and just follow your will. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for everything that you're doing through her and through her family. Just guide them to that closer relationship to you. In the name of Jesus, we're praying and declaring that. And God, I pray for Robin right now, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just... Um, Continue to move in a powerful way in her in her life, Father, and God, Lord, and also that you just give her strength, Father, as we know we she lost her dad, but one day she gets to see him again. Praise mm -hmm. God, because I know he just received the Lord as his Lord and Savior. That is awesome. Thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. for your mercies, God, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your grace, Father. Thank you for dying on that cross. For us, Father, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Yeah. You know, I was uh, talking to what Robin just, I mean, we all kind of were texting. And, you know, it, it just goes to show you guys, because, you know, last Tuesday night, you know, for the audience to know, because we know this, but, you know, last Tuesday night, Robin was at the... Summer Wells Prayer Circle down in Boston Park in Kingsport, Tennessee at, uh, you know, 7, 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Let's plug that in right there. <laughs> but, you know, we <laughs> in there, and, you know, it was such a sweet spirit, and it was the first time that I had met Robin, and she was just a joy. And, you know, she was coming home for, her, I think a daughter had a birthday party, but, like a celebration going on. And so, um, you know, she had to get home. And and then last night, I'm thinking about it as I'm driving home from Kingsport, how Robin wasn't there, how life changes so quickly. Hmm. And I just I just really feel like, and especially, you know, since COVID came around, and I'm not blaming every death on COVID or sickness on COVID. Like, I don't like to give the death that much glory. But... Um, you know, I think all of us have experienced more uh, death and sickness um, with people that are close to us mm -hmm. in the last year and a half than we have probably in the majority of our lives. And, um, and it, it can really be disheartening when, you know, you people that are close to you are, are dying and they're young and it could really make you want to question the Lord is why. Because, you know, we hear those, we hear that question, why does bad things happen? Well, basically, because we have, live in a fallen world and it happens to bad people, too. So um, there's a short answer on that. But, um, you know, so I just want, I just want to pray for everybody right now that has been touched by death. Father, I just lift up every single person under the sound of my voice at this present moment and those who will listen at another time because you father are beyond constraints of time. I want to encourage each and every person to not give up the hope, not give up the faith because there's a greater plan and there is a greater purpose for all of it. And we cannot 
see it. We cannot understand it. We cannot fathom it because our thinking is not his thinking. His thinking is above ours. Our ways are not his ways. His ways are above ours. Father, you say that you are close to the brokenhearted. And some people may even want to know, <clears throat> where is your God? My God is in the midst of it all. My God is holding the hand of the dying that he's getting ready to take home. My God is sitting next to the bedside, giving last rites, if you will, giving another opportunity to the soul that hasn't accepted him. My God is in the midst of the turmoil, holding back so much chaos that we couldn't even fathom what would happen if he took his hand off of us. My God is hovering over the earth, protecting it, loving and nurturing. That's where God is. He is right in the middle of your circumstance. Don't lose that hope. Don't lose that trust. Don't let the enemy steal your peace because that's what he's coming for. He wants to take your peace from you. He wants to take your conviction of love for the Lord from you. He wants to get you in to the darkness. He wants to get you down a road of depression and self-destruction. He wants to get you in a place where you can't even see. But let me tell you, and here's hope in that too. Even if for some reason you slip and you fall and you slide down. Your God, my God, Yahweh, creator. He's going to reach down and pull you back out of it. Because that's the kind of God he is. The angels will rejoice over one sinner being saved more so than the 99 that already are. Because it's not God's will for any to be perished without him. Father, I thank you for hope. I thank you that we always have hope. Lord, I just cover the minds of every person right now. And I ask you, Lord, just to put a veil over their eyes of anything that would deter them from you. Just protect them, Lord. Because you're, there's so much in your word about how you are the protector. How you are. These are the things that you give us. These are the promises. And I'm just going to pray for mighty conviction over every person who's not in the word daily. You need to be in that word daily. You need to have that kind of determination to say, I am not going to start my day without reading at least one verse. Just open your Bible. Doesn't matter. Let it fall open. If you're that kind of person that you think, just let that Bible fall open and land wherever the lots would have it and just start reading from there. That's one of my favorite things to do. Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you that we have it to hold on to. Lord, I ask that you would bless your people, that you would keep them from all harm, that you would be right there holding them, encompassing them, surrounding them so that they can feel you because, yes, we're two or three are gathered in your name. You're surely in the midst. But what happens, Lord, when we're all alone and there's not a second person in our midst? Are you still there, Lord? Because I know sometimes I've asked that question because I'm not perfect. Are you still there? But here again, that's where we know by his word that he says he will never leave us. <laughs> and he will not forsake. I want each person that's lost somebody to remember that. He's close to the brokenhearted. He knows your every thought. And he is collecting your every tear. And nothing is going to go to the waste. He will bring beauty out of these ashes because that's what he does. Thank you, Father, for that. Amen. Amen. All right. We've got a few 
prayer request that we're kind of I'm going back for. There's been a few back, but uh, really want to search it out. Uh, I know Tracy Joe Reynolds says uh, my brother-in-law went home to the Lord for his family. Uh, definitely praying for your brother-in-law. Uh, we don't know the specifics, but we definitely want to lift that up. Uh, so yeah, Father, right now we ask you to be with the family of Tracy here for her brother-in-law. Just be the comforter that you are, because we know that you want to be in these moments. In these moments where we feel so alone that we we lose something, uh, we lose somebody so personal to us. We we just want the, your comfort to be there. So that family is missing a piece of their puzzle. Also, please be with them and give them comfort in this. Jesus, move through that family in this time when they need you the most. Be with them as the great comforter, Jesus. Move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God, I pray that you just be with them right now, Father, that you would just um, comfort them, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, I pray that if anybody in his family that doesn't know Jesus, Father, Lord, let them come to know you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Okay, our next one, Tracy's got another prayer for, continue to pray for her friend with breast cancer. There is hope. Your prayers are uplifting. Please pray for Wales family. Uh, yeah, I guess the Wales family, talking about Summer's family also, and but the breast cancer, yeah, we're, we've been praying for you. You're on our list. She's on the list, and we'll, we'll continue to pray for that. Because God is a miraculous God who can heal and restore all things. So definitely, definitely. Father, I ask you to please be with uh, Tracy's friend just through this. Give her that hope because cancer is no obstacle for you. You can uh, you can make the healing come. You can make all things new. You can make her whole again. We're believing in that. We're asking for that, Jesus. Move in a mighty way so she can just glorify you. She can point towards you. She can say that it was a healing from Jesus. We're lifting her up now also. And like she asked for, the Summers family, is always in our prayers and we'll continue praying for them. You know, we're hard in that situation and we'll, we'll kind of hit on that a little bit later, father, but just move in that way as just answer to this prayer request. Father move. I'd like to ask uh, if her friend uh, with breast cancer, I keep seeing a, a lady with like brown shortish hair, is that? As I just keep seeing this lady, and she's she's just exuberant. So I, I just want to um, I want to think that that's her. Um, and I I, I think she's I, I mean gosh, I just thank you, Father, that uh, she's gonna be fine. I thank you, Lord, that you are with her right now. I thank you, Lord, that um, this uh, this lady, the breast cancer. Uh, is is and I don't mean this in a very passive way. So please all don't take it that way. But you know, praise God that they have come um, and made strides with breast cancer, and that women are dying from it like they used to. Um, now I, I don't know the severity of uh, hers, um, but I know that God is with her, and I feel like I just want to say, don't be afraid, have no fear. Um, and I just keep seeing this this lady with a like I don't know like a medium kind of brown hair. I hope that's her. If not, it's she, she said she just said in the comments, yes, yes, it is. Thank you. I right, guess. Um, then then you know, uh, thank you, Jesus. Um, so just uh, he just praise him because the lady that I'm seeing, um. I don't have, I don't, I'm not given time frames or anything like that, uh, but she's, she's alive and well, and that gives me hope. I get time. I got pills going on right now. She's so, saying that's her. She's saying so, that's her. Yeah. I think she's going to be, she's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. She might have a few bumps in the road um, that might look a little scary, um, but Jesus is, is just like right there with her. There's, there's no fear. There should be no fear. Wow, amen. All right. Hope our and next, faith, Tracy said. Yes, hope and faith. Absolutely. Faith is a mountain mover. Uh, our next prayer, prayer is from Kimberly Ellie. It says, pre, I can't talk today. Please pray for my daughter-in-law. 
Her name is Whitley. She is having a difficult pregnancy. Oh, wow. Please pray for her and the baby. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, uh, kind of ask Kimber. Well, I'm not down here, but trying to figure out how far along she is. But uh, uh, that's a relevant to her prayer. So uh, I'll just definitely be praying for her also. Uh, Father, please be with Kimberly's daughter-in-law. I know that this child going to be a blessing to so many people, a life truly created by you that you're giving us. That's the blessing of a child is a gift from you that we get to experience, we get to enjoy, and we get to see what it, full circle what it really, what we really mean to you, the blessing of a child and their, their family and their parents and their grandparents and everything else. We ask you to be with her through this pregnancy. Her daughter-in-law, be with her. Give her the comfort. Give her the strength and allow this just to go smoothly bring this baby into this world healthy and help guide them to you so this baby can be raised in a, in a household that just serves you that's our main heartbeat for every family is just be a family gathered around to serve you father lift her up lift her up now to give her the strength for this pregnancy and make the baby well and just allow this to be a huge blessing that you mean it to be father move in a mighty way move jesus thank you so much thank you Yes, yes, Jesus, yes. All right. Let's see. Uh, hello, Philip Woods. He says, keep praying for his wife's dad. All right. And uh, yes. Philip. Uh, Father-in-law had a surgery. Um, Phil has been um, pretty good at keeping in touch with me here this week with his uh, father-in-law. Um, awesome. He's had transfusions. Um, he's having a blood pressure problem. I keep uh, proclaiming Ezekiel 16 and 6. It says, uh, you know, I see you um, struggling, basically, in, in your blood. I say to live. Yea, I say to live. So, Philip, I just want you to keep holding on to that because I truly believe that was a word from the Lord to give to you and your family to uh, hold on to that but we're absolutely I'm absolutely in my prayers for him and um i don't have um any vibes if you will uh, I, I see a struggle um but that's okay you know it's okay to have struggles because uh, you know jesus is with struggles and he's with us in those times um and I just kind of get the sense that maybe the Lord's doing something with him through the, um So if you all just kind of hold on and hold out for that hope and hold on to that, um, that's going to be tough. Yes. Um, all right. And I, I want to know um, the baby. The, is she six months pregnant? We're out and about. I'm on my computer too, so I can see the comments too. Yeah, I'm having to scroll up on my phone. I just keep hearing something about six months when it comes to the baby. Four months. Okay, four months. Okay, so here's what I think. And I think she's going to have to go on bed rest. I keep hearing something about six months, so um, have her take it really easy, um, because I think at around six months, maybe if I'm hearing correctly, or um, that she's she's probably she's gonna might have to go on bed rest. So um, have her hydrate really good and uh, follow her doctor's orders. <laughs> Right. Felix says, also pray for a friend of mine. Keep us is... Huh? Sorry. Because, you know, um, I, when I think about pregnancy, you know, Satan uh, wants to take the kids. It doesn't matter how, what stage that they're in. And uh, so he can bring these things, stress and all this kind of stuff. If she's having difficulty pregnancies at, at uh, four months. So, Lord, I'm just going to lift up her daughter-in-law, Whitney, this pregnancy father, um, that she's already having some difficulties. She's, uh, what, in the second beginning of the second trimester. Um, so, Father, I'm, I am, um, but 
I also just see a happy baby that I don't feel like the baby's in a whole lot of distress at this particular moment. Um, and remember guys, I only see in part, I don't get the whole picture. Okay. Um, so father, I, I thank you that you're going to pull her through this, um, that it, she's going to have a difficult road, but it's going to be okay. Um, and that's just what my overall sensing is about that. Um, so Lord, I just ask that you give peace, peace in this situation and, and knowing that you got your hand on this child already um, and the mama. And I thank you for that, Lord. I, I ask, Lord, that um, extra love and showering of affection and pampering um, be poured out on, on Whitney. Is that her name? Yeah, Whitley. 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 In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, uh, for that. I thank you, Lord. Amen. I agree with that. Absolutely. And just keep your prior requests coming. Uh, we're going to kind of hit on some different topics while we're waiting. Uh, we'll have some more prior requests coming in from Kaye Shelton. All right. Ooh. She's, she says, please pray for my niece, Melissa, who has a high risk pregnancy. She is due in 11 days. Baby girl's name is Sadie. Well, and I just kind of want to point this out, kind of not being a little bit of the obvious, but it seems like we're, we're dealing with a lot of death and life here in this uh, in this night because it, it's kind of like this consistent thing. I mean, I know it's something that happens every day, but it's an ongoing trend for the night. So we definitely, definitely want to be praying for everybody affected from the blessings on both sides because death, uh, oftentimes when their identity is in Christ, they know Jesus, it is a blessing. It is one of the greatest blessings, but also a life is one of the greatest blessings also. We want to see them both as it is. But uh, yeah, let's definitely be praying for uh, Sadie and the high risk pregnancy. Uh, definitely, kind of sounds like kind of like uh, what we were talking about earlier, needing maybe bed rest for her also, because that, that's definitely difficult, and definitely don't want to cause any do anything to cause any danger to the baby. So let's be praying for her right now, uh, Father. I ask you now just to be with uh, Kay's niece, Melissa. Be with her through this pregnancy. Allow this baby to gain the strength. Give her strength. Give Melissa strength. And give baby Sadie also the strength to make her be a healthy, beautiful baby when she just comes into this world right on your time, right as she needs to be, and be another blessing for this family because babies are such a huge blessing, such a huge thing that points towards you and the birth that you are, new life. Because we know you're all about the new life, Father. Mm -hmm. Be with this new life. Be with this baby. Be with this pregnancy right now, Father, give her the comfort that she needs. Give her the healing that she needs. Whatever may be going on to make this a high-risk pregnancy, give her this, this comfort in this season and allow it just to go smoothly Jesus, so we can point towards you. Give her strength. Give her power. Give her this hope that only you can provide, Father, in this situation. Move in a mighty way so we can glorify you through it. Jesus, move through this young life. In the name of Jesus, we're declaring this. We're asking this we're proclaiming this for this new life. Has Melissa been having a high, like uh, blood pressure problems? High blood pressure. I, I keep hearing some have blood pressure. Um, because if, if if that's the case, then um, yeah, she she needs to take it real easy. Kai says, thank you for the blessing. Thank you for being a part of our tribe and coming out here. Hypertension is what, she, what she's saying. All right. Yeah, she's just, you know, that's a, that's a big one. You can take that Ezekiel 16 and 6 and use, and use with that too, okay? So when, um, because that has everything to do with blood. And uh, the life of a person is in the blood. So when our blood pressure and, and all that is wacky, you know, we want to pray those scriptures that speak life. So um, find all of your scriptures, Google it, however you do it, uh, anything that talks life and uh, start proclaiming those um, over her and anybody else. Uh, Philip, that goes for you, too. Absolutely. 
Uh, Sharon says she's been chatting with Haley while she's driving down the road. Says she's fine. So that's awesome. We're, we're excited for Haley's arrival here. We're constantly praying for her. So thank you for the update, Sharon. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Philip Woods has another prayer request for another death, sadly. Uh, dealing with that a lot here lately. I know a lot of it can be, like you say, contribute to the some of it can be contributed to the virus and other things, but you know, definitely be praying for Sarah and Ted writings. We definitely be with them, Father. Be with them now. Just as we've been praying for all these other people that, that this death death is so real and it, it does affect us. It does affect us, but it doesn't have to always affect us in a negative sense because a lot of times when people when people get know you and their identity is found in you, it's a rejoicing, it's a coming home, it's a prodigal son returning to their true, true home where you created them to be. We always want to see it as a celebration. Be with that family and give them this comfort. Whatever comfort they need in this time, be with them. Move in a mighty way, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Just move. Move, mm-hmm. Father. Yeah, I just had a scripture come to my mind. Hold on, let me. Oh, I hate that my thing does that. You know that scripture, uh, uh, death war without sting? Mm-hmm. You know where that one is real off the top of your head? It, it just keeps uh, just keeps resonating in my head over and over. I want to re- look up the right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't I, know. I'm not one to, to know exactly where the scriptures are. I know they're in there. That's why I tell people yeah. it's in there. I promise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is a verse. Mm-hmm. So popular, even Johnny Cash made a song about it. <laughs> All right. Well, she's kind of looking at it. you care if I throw out another prayer thing here? Uh, kind of looking at death and the sadness of everything that's affecting one person that we've been praying for, and, and she's kind of she has been on the news in a public way. Is uh, Gabby Petitos? They found out today that she was strangled, and uh, just praying for her family. Uh, they they know at least they know the piles and they know things. They're still still searching for her boyfriend. To, praying that he will be fi- found to have to give some closure to the, this whole case. So I definitely want to be with her family because, I mean, I can't imagine that, losing your daughter. I know I've got a 17-year-old daughter, and it scares me to death. I uh, often be accused of being overprotective, but I feel like you need to be uh, most of the time because this is a bad, dangerous world. So we definitely will be praying for Gabby's family on this uh, the national level. So, that, yeah, let's just lift her up right now and uh, pray for her. Father, thank you for just bringing to light this Gabby case. Thank you for just showing the calls and giving this family what they needed, this this realization of everything that went on so that they can know. Because that's the biggest thing is not knowing, not knowing the calls, not calls, knowing what happened, not knowing. And also, I ask you, please, just uh, be with her boyfriend right now. Just step into his life in a supernatural way where he can really see what he's done. I don't know his heart. He might be regretting it. It might have been something that, that wasn't supposed to happen that did happen. But, Father, we know that you you have a redemptive nature, and you all of us are your children, and you definitely want to redeem him. And that that, that does change what he's done. He does definitely does need to, to be found and Send it, get sent to court and really had a, a fair trial, but that doesn't take away from he needs you mostly. He needs his identity found in you. He needs to be asking you for forgiveness and asking the family forgiveness mm-hmm. for what he's done. If if he has, if he was the one who done it, the, it's, it's still not out for certain until the, the trial is, but be with him and guide him to you because he's like all the rest of us needs a relationship with you. And whatever we've done, whatever case it is, nobody's ever too far gone to find your grace. That's the beautiful thing about your grace. It's sufficient for anything and everything, Father. Move in a mighty way so he can be found and just try, tried and allow the truth to be set free and set out. Father. Move in that way. Jesus, in your name, we're asking you this. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It says First Corinthians fifteen, and uh, I'd I'd like to just take this uh, verse fifty through fifty-eight, and I'm reading in a New King James, um, and a, the caption in the title over that is "Final Victory." You know, because we are we're talking about death so much, and I see it so much. I want us to remember, and especially um, if we know that our loved ones um, know the Lord. 
So this is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. Won't take long. Uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain, Lord. You know, I just want you all to remember that, and especially, especially if you know um, your loved one is, when they pass is going because this is this is a prophecy you know when, when we pass away we're fulfilling prophecy that was written mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know you know uh, that's pretty cool it might be the only prophecy I ever tell you <laughs> so you know but we got to remember that when when the Lord comes and we hear that last time think about that last trumpet we think about the lord coming back seeing all of us that we're all going to be there and all the dead's going to rise and you know this this here to me is more personal because you're going to hear the trump of the lord at some point we are all going to die um so let's let us remember that there's no sting for us it hurts our loved ones that we leave behind. But we who know the Lord, we will be with him. And there's not going to be any more of this. So for your loved ones who have passed on, they're rejoicing in heaven. They're, they're dancing, they're singing, they're doing whatever. I mean, I don't know. I'm not there. I've never been there. Yet. If they know Jesus. They have to know yeah, Jesus. yeah, absolutely. And and this is and I, and I am talking as if everybody under the sound of my voice um, knows the Lord, and I know that maybe everybody doesn't. So if you don't know Him, this would be a good reason because without Him, death is scary. I remember when I used to get visions of my dad, like, and it used to scare me to death. It used to just scare me, and to this day, I don't know if my dad ever accepted something. Um, but I like to think that at the very last moment, at least, just like the uh, the sinner on the cross, that my dad gave his heart to the Lord and repented of his sins. Because I see him there. no matter what, I like to see him there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to pray for the ones that don't know. Um and and educate yourself. Read the read the word about because there's there's no fear in death when you know the Lord. The fear that we have that we're never going to see that person again. But that's even a lot that we believe because their spirit's going to live on in you. You're going to keep their spirit alive through the memories or the traditions that they pass down or you know anything like that i can look at my house and I, I can see my mother i can see my grandmother keep their memories and their spirits alive in me and um because they are still a part of me and i'm still a part of them um even though they have passed on and, and went to be with the lord uh, and i know i'm going to see them again so you know death is swallowed up by victory just like that you know we're victorious in the end when we know the lord and miriam shared a, 
verse of scripture I'm going to read from Romans 8 11. She shared this from the King James Bible. But it says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit, by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the same Spirit of God that raised Him from the dead that's in us when we had the Holy Spirit inside of us when we received Jesus is in us. So we have that same glorification that's going to happen, that same risen body. So that's beautiful, Miriam. Thank you for sharing that Bible verse with us. And definitely, that's our celebration that we have. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's see. All right. Timmy, you had some people, I guess, just kind of on the prayer list of people here. Miss Christy's with us. Hello, Christy and Ronnie. How are you all doing? Let's see. Sharon, Snap, a glorious day. Absolutely. It'll be a glorious, Pray glorious for, day. Pray for um, my family. We, we lost, I lost my great aunt not too long ago, and which is my nanny's sister. Um, right. Pray that they, were, they can raise enough money so they can bury her and, and stuff with a funeral conference, too. Yeah, definitely be praying for that. That, that. I know that's a huge, huge burden on those. It's, it's bad that they have to have, deal with the burden of the, the, the loss and the heartache of the loss, but having to deal with the financial burdens is also in itself huge. So definitely we'll be praying and lifting that up. Timmy, I know that's difficult, and I, I hate it to see anybody have to go through it. So it, it is sad. So we will definitely, definitely, definitely be praying. Uh, Granny Bean says she's here and thank you. And thank you for being with us, Granny, and everything. Thank you all for being with us. You all are our family. You all are here with us through every week. And I love the people who keep coming back. Oh, I love everybody. Don't mistake me. But thank you all for being dedicated, <laughs> coming back each week and showing up because you're part of it, family. You're part of this tribe. And we love yeah. it. We love the community that we're building online from all different parts of the world. It, it, it's amazing and it, it's exciting in a sense. I just often think, hey, we're getting to do. Just imagine what the, what the apostles would have done if they had the technology that we have now. And I think <laughs> we're getting to see it. We're getting to see it play out. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, Thank Miriam was Kyle, Kyle Shelton oh, yeah. saying, praying for you. Miriam also says, please continue to pray for my five adult children, either mental illness diagnosis and also on the autistic spectrum. Uh, autism, I, there's an awesome uh, awesome picture going around. It, it says it's the super gift, and it kind of shows one very careful doing like the dab and everything else and just celebrating autism. It's just a different gift and, and everything else. And definitely mental issues. I know that can be a hindrance in so many ways. We all deal with mental th- things along our path, all in different capacities, all in different ways. Uh, I know sometimes God provides doctors with the knowledge of the right medications. I know sometimes it can be a spiritual attacks. And there can be so many factors into that. But we don't want to be always quick to say everything's in the spiritual realm, but a lot of, a lot of our battles are in the spiritual realm. But Sometimes it's chemical imbalances in the body, and there, there's so many factors, and we never want to to, to uh, put any of that down because it's all in its right place when it's put into the right place. So definitely, we are pl- praying for your family, Miriam. I just want to pray right now for them. Thank you for the blessing, Father of Miriam. She just is so supportive of us. She's here every week, and we thank you for her and also for her family. We know that you want to bless them. We know that you we you want to see them more operating in the full capacity to glorify you. So just be with them, help them through any struggle that you can, that you will help them through, help them overcome all these situations that they're up against. So they can point towards you while your will to be done in this family, in this situation, be with them. Father. Lift up Miriam's family and lift up her spirits to see you at work through all this. Father, God, Miriam, God, her family, father, we're lifting her up to you tonight in the name of Jesus. We're asking you to, Step in in a huge, mighty way, Father. Move. Amen. You know, I just keep thinking about uh, when Jesus came down from the um, Mount of Transfiguration and the uh, the Father was there with the, the Son and um, there was a, a demon spirit uh, called a seizure, actually. 
that's what it translates into. The, the child was having seizures. And so this demonic activity that uh, kept throwing him in the fire, you know, kept trying to kill him. And um, so he, he says, you know, I think we all know the story, at least I hope so. But, um, you know, the disciples couldn't cast it out that was left behind, you know. And so when Jesus came down with the others um, and he was like, you know, you little faith, you know, how much longer do I have to tarry? I can almost just see, you know, Jesus being somewhat frustrated because here he is up on the Mount God, Moses, uh, um, you know, being shown the disciples, all this glorious thing. And he comes down off of that to this, um, the disciples that couldn't do these things. And, you know, the bottom line of that, Jesus said, you know, some things only come out with prayer and fasting. And that's just what I keep thinking about as I was writing down Miriam's uh, request, you know, um, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. And that's just what I kept hearing over as I was writing. It was prayer and fasting. I don't know who needs to do the praying and the fasting. Um, if it's, um, you know, you, um, because you're the mom or if it's them because they're the adults, I don't know if they are, uh, trying to break free because the mental health is, um, issues, illnesses, they're not of God. They're not from him. Uh, he'd be more than happy to deliver uh, us from those, um, but sometimes we have to find the right avenue because some things only come out with prayer and fasting. Um, and I'm not saying that you haven't done that because you probably have. Maybe that's just a word of encouragement for you to keep doing it if that's what you've been doing. Um, but that's just what I keep hearing, uh, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, next, next topic on, on my list here, my little notes here. I definitely, as a nat, going back to the nas national scale. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Miriam, uh, I keep, <laughs> thank you, Miriam. I keep meaning to tell you, Leah, uh, for some reason, your videos keep pausing like during it, like, kind of like an echo. So I don't know. I don't know if that's something. That open. It was probably my iPad. Yeah. Sorry. She said she did hear about prayer and fasting, so thank you. Yeah, that that's uh, that's really the bottom line on that. That's just what I kept hearing because of uh, you know the mental the mental illness diagnoses. So that's good that she heard the prayer and fasting part. <laughs> yeah. So I encourage any of y'all if you hear of anything that we need to kind of work on, like technical difficulties, let us know. Because sometimes I don't know if it's just my phone and I'm just hearing things through hit that I don't know what's going on. It's because I heard it and I meant to say something to Leah earlier, but I'm like, well, maybe it's my phone just lagging or something. So, yeah, uh, just always encourage y'all to, because we don't always know what's going on on your all side. So just keep help, help us keep informed. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, kind of like going back to the to the, our worldwide prayers and national prayers is uh, just our kids in school. Uh, something else that caught my attention today is attacking the kids like in the comic books. I just read an article today that the new Superman, which is the son of Superman and uh, Lois Lane is coming out as bisexual. So they're just kind of, they're pushing their agenda so hard. And I, I, to me, I will stand on the argument. Our kids do not need to be taught sexuality at a young age. And they say, well, it's not. It's just teach them bisexuality. It's in the word. Bisexuality. Sexuality. It's in the word. We don't need to be teaching our kids about anything sexuality. Uh, but anyway, they're, they're attacking our kids. They're attacking them into the school level. They're trying to indoctrinate them to because they're wanting to destroy the family. They're wanting to destroy households. They're wanting to destroy our whole concept of marriage. And I always take the Valdo view of marriage. It's, uh, it, it, for me, God really revealed it to me in a huge way because I, I think even uh, well-intending pastors even mess up because it's so quick to just marry whoever. And God really revealed it to me before two people can be married. They should be both followers of Christ. They should have their identities found in Jesus and really know what his love means because I don't think any marriage can be what it's meant to be if they don't really both really know the love of Jesus. 
and what he really did and who he is. So for me, I, I take it one step further. I say I challenge everybody, and it's just not an attack on homosexuality or people who believe a little bit differently. I know how the Bible, and that's what I always want to put to is the, the Word of God, how the Bible lays out marriage, what it looks like. So I'm not out here to attack anybody else. I, I'll love you. I will be friends with you. I will pray for you. But uh, when it really comes up to I really want to set out and define marriage the way God defines it, the way Scripture shows it and represent, represents it. So that's that's my what I'm holding to. So it, it's not even just to get bit against homosexuality. It, it fits a whole big, huge spectrum. It can be unequally yoked people. Sadly, people who are unequally yoked want to jump into marriage when one of them might not know who Christ is, and then all that burden falls on that other person to keep trying to show them Christ. So I feel like for a, a true godly marriage, both of them need to know who they are in Christ. So that's kind of my my soapbox for right now that uh, God's really revealed to me. So that's what he spoke to me in a clear way. So I'm, I'm riding with it. So it, but it, it back to that, but I uh, kind of continue on this prayer for our kids are being trying to be indoctrinated because they want to break down this family. So I just want to take this moment to pray for, especially, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure several other people who are in other countries can kind of help highlight some of the things going on, but I know in America, it's a big push for that to uh, indoctrinate our kids. So I definitely want to be praying for that right now. So let's put that up there first and foremost right now. Father, Father, help us grow the church, be the church to help show our children, our next generation, what it means to be a follower of you, what real love looks like, what real marriage looks like. Help define that. And I think that's going to be defined through the church and how the church represents it, how the church shows it, how the church preaches it, how the church teaches it. That's my big prayer always. It goes to the church right in the face. Sometimes we need to call out the church, the big C church, and say, that's what we need to be getting back to is representing Christ well and showing his standards, showing his methods, showing his way. So help us be the, the forerunner on this to represent marriage in the right light and what it really means to be a follower of Christ and join together with another follower and be this biblical marriage follower. Lift that up and also help us get politicians in who are going to not cave into the left wing's agenda of making this the new normal uh, homosexuality should never be represented. It's the new normal. We know how you define it. Like I said, we don't want to just be out here uh, trying to tell the world how the world needs to be the world because the world is going to act like the world. I know it's going to be sinful. I know it's going to deteriorate. I know it's going to go down bad ways. I know it's not going to represent you well, but help us put the people in place to help hold on, hold the line to what it means to be a follower of Christ in this biblical marriage. Help us hold this line and help us be at the forefront of that. Father, be with our kids, especially in Christian homes. Father, while this message is to go out to any family, any Christian home, you need to hear this. Parents, mother and father, teach your kids the ways of Jesus. Teach them the Bible. Pray with them. Honor Jesus through your life. Show them what a true family house should look like. And I know every household is not the same. I know sometimes there's just a mother in, in the families. I know sometimes there's just a father. I know sometimes there's split homes. I'm a victim of the split home personally that I had to deal with divorce. But help us. Help us be who you called each of us to be, to show Jesus well and reflect your will well. And that goes for everybody out there. Help us get on the right path and that uh, step on some toes. And maybe that's even living together when you're not married. Maybe that's somebody out here who really needs that conviction from Jesus to say, hey, represent me well. Because there's just temptations when you live together before you're married. Represent me well. Maybe that's step on somebody's toes, but maybe that's what somebody needs to hear. Because we want to honor you, Jesus, in everything we do. Help us get onto that foundation to represent you well, Father, and help guide us each. From the sound of my voice, whoever needs to hear this, step in a bit, bit step in in a huge way, Father. Move, Jesus, move. Amen. Oh, I think we lost Leah. <laughs> Bring her back in. Am I back? Um, You're actually, back. We lost you. <laughs> well, quickly called just to, just as and she knocked me off. Um, she um she said that she's 18 miles inside of South Carolina. So oh, awesome. Five more hours to go. Right, so. right, right. Awesome. Definitely, definitely praying for Haley to get up here safely and continue praying. Yeah. Pray for well, that. She said her vision of, she had forgotten, but when, when she had her vision of coming up here, um, she said the states were lit up. She said yeah. it, I forgot that it was nighttime. 
And I said, well, see, you're, you're right on track. So, wow. <laughs> so she's, she's praying along the way and uh, she's doing good. I'm going to call her when we get done. She forgot we were starting at seven. I thought we'd be done by now. She's like, oh, it's so right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, That's what all I'm right. Doing. Let's see. All right. We got another prayer request. Let's see what we got here with Kimberly Elliott also says, <clears throat> sorry. Ooh, something down my throat wrong way. But anyway, it says my daughter in law had a doctor appointment yesterday. She talked to my son and he said she is now on bed rest. Please keep him her prayers. Daughter in law, is this the same prayer about your pregnant daughter in law, right? I think that's what. Is same daughter. Same here? I think same one. I think so, Kimberly. I hope so. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Blood pressure. I believe so. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely keeping her in her, her prayers. How far along is she? Does she say? I won't, I don't know if this is from her or. That's why I can't. I I am. Um, I can't remember who was at four months. Yeah, maybe Mama, maybe four Mama. months. Now that was uh, we, that was okay. Melissa Sadie is the baby. Melissa, I believe, is the mama. I don't know who Kimberly. Who's Kimberly? I'm getting so confused with all the pregnancy. What is going Who's on? With the four months. All these women out there getting pregnant. I'm not drinking the water, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want Miriam. that to take. <laughs> Miriam shared another Bible verse with us. Psalms 127 from the King James Version also, it says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, they build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep, lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of. Absolutely. Point all to the family and all that. That's awesome. And seeing that covers that sleeping part, and that covers, you know, I love that. The fruit of the womb, and, uh, yep, you know, absolutely. What is that one? Is he blessed as a man who has a quiver full of a uh, full of children? You know, God. You know, children are the inheritance of our future. You know, so it doesn't surprise me at all, and it's it's not a new tactic um, that you know the children of today and of tomorrow, and the wombs of tomorrow are being under attack. Matter of fact, I just feel like I'm going to pray right now for every woman that is not yet pregnant, but is trying to be. Mm. Father, I just ask that you would open the womb to all the women to populate the earth with godly children. Yes, Jesus. Because right now, Satan is trying to do population control. All across the world right now, from the womb to the grave, but pretty much, um, because he here's here's my theory on this, and it's just a theory, and it's my own that Satan is trying to do population control across the world because he knows his time is limited, and he is yeah. trying to keep as many people from coming to the light as possible. So his battle, because see, he can't fight a big battle. He doesn't have the army. Only a third of the angels went with him. And yes, he's out here, uh, you know, getting people. So we, I'm going to just, I'm going to thank you, Lord, that you were going to be bringing um, new blood into these women to open these wombs to produce good fruit for you. That the armies of the Lord is going to rise up in another generation as well. And the enemy, as we know, is defeated already. But see, he's going to fight to the very end. 
and he's going to do it and he's going to give it and he's going to try to take as many people down with him as he can. He's, I said this to someone today. He doesn't want your allegiance. He wants your soul. And I come against that in the name of Jesus. And I tell you, Satan, right now, you have no authority over the people of God. You have no authority to touch or harm the case that you are bringing against these people and their womb into the courts of heaven. I say to you that justice is rendered in their favor. And that these children that are in the wombs, these struggling wombs, that they are going to rise up against you in the name of Jesus. That they are going to be mighty warriors for the Lord and you have no place with them. I cover them right now in the blood of Jesus and by that name you must flee. And remove yourself from these situations because the name of Jesus is above your name. You are below him. You are a slithering snake upon the ground. And you have no place here. You have no authority. And I take back every assignment. I call them null and void in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you, God, have given us the power and the authority to use your name and your righteousness and cast these things out of our lives, out of our atmosphere, and out of our influence. Because we are covered under your blood, we have the right to proclaim your goodness in our life. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are the master and that you are the commander. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing that you don't know, that you don't see, and that you haven't ordained, good, bad, or indifferent. And all we have to do is trust in you because nothing is passing through your hand that we don't know about, I mean, that you don't know about and that you haven't already taken care of because you are on the other side of time. The constraints of time do not hold you. As a matter of fact, you created time. You, Father, are the creator. Thank you, God, for that. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. Purify us, Lord. Take us through that fire. Just like Langley was asking for that next level, show us what's in our hearts. Show us where we lack. Show us where we need to improve so we can go to that next level. So we can walk in that power and authority that you've given us with no fear. Knowing that even if we stumble in it, that you are going to pick us up and you're going to carry us. And it's all going to be okay. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Create in the world a clean heart. Every person here, Father, I pray that every head is bowed and that every person right now that's listening to me is asking the Lord the same thing. Reveal to me, Lord, my hidden sins, that I may repent, that I may come before your courts with a pure heart and clean hands, that there's no blood on my hands, and that, that my prayers will be a sweet smelling incense in your nostrils that there's no stench coming from me that would repulse you that is my prayer for myself and everybody under the sound of my voice right now give us the peace lord thank you thank you yes Kay says, with God, all things are possible. Amen. All right. Kind of the last thing that I, I kind of want to start ending this on is pray, praying for boldness in the church. 
and uh, that's kind of one of the kind of the starting things that Awaken was created for us because I want to awaken the church as people in the church to really walk it out and be what God has called us to be. And uh, that's kind of how I want to finish the night. It's just kind of praying for boldness in the church. And that's the church in Afghanistan. That's the church in the, uh, the underground churches and all these places. And it's the American church to get back to the first love. That's Jesus. So, so many have walked away from the true faith and just knowing Jesus and pointing people to Jesus. So if, if I don't I'm not to point out individual churches, that's not what we're doing. We're praying for the church as a whole to just come back to the true love of Jesus. Yeah, amen. True love of him and being bold and obedient. So that's one of my big prayer that I want to pray for is just to awaken the church, the boldness that God has called us to be. So I want to start this prayer off right now. Father, thank you for the church. Thank you for what part we get to play in this because awaken is more than just uh, building a, a community of believers. It's also about pouring into the other uh, bodies of believers, pour, pouring into other churches, uh, to awaken them because that's the heartbeat between, behind awaken because God, you've created us to be a, this giant, this huge move that shakes the very foundations of earth. And sadly, in so many ways, people, the world is not seeing the church working in its full capacity. They're not seeing the church moving in a, a huge way because they I mean it can be a lack of boldness. It can be this, uh, division that's been thrown into this church we need to get back to unity we need to get back to boldness we need to get back to you father we need to get back to our first love which should be always you pointing people to you proclaiming you helping people find their identities in you awaken people to this new life because that's us we want to awaken people to a new life in christ and this yeah. new life this new life can be people who are just coming to him in the first time just the first time actually receiving the holy spirit so they can move in this new capacity this new level is likely kind of Compared to one of the his his thing is the this next level and that one of the big words here at awaken is next because everybody has a next this next looks different for everybody this next looks different for the church this next looks looks different for everything but this next is they were want to speak into identity is this move of God this next level for the church this ch the church needs to step up and, I've, and it's been on my heart this division has been on my heart this brokenness has been on my heart that's why i'm doing the broken church podcast that's why i'm doing the prayer rooms that's why awaken is such a big passion in my life that's why i want to see it move into full capacity because i want to awaken people to this new life so yes. we can step into this next this next you've called us to so give this church boldness give us boldness allow yes. your will yes. to be done and shake these very foundations allow our voices to go out to shake these foundations as our ending prayer is we want these prayers to go out we want these prayers to shake foundations to move people to new life in you jesus to this next help people walk into their next give people a passion for their next help people step walk this out and find you if their identity is not found in you find you in a real way and then and then when their identity is found in you to discover their next because you put something inside of every one of us like the, your uh, story jesus the, the parable that you told of the the sower that or the the, the good king who had gave his his uh his the the money to these people and you you gave them each so much and you've given us something each for a purpose and you want to see it come full circle circle the talents the, the talents that you handed out you've given us each a talent and we're going to take that from meaning just from money to something inside of us because you put something inside of us each of us have a talent inside of us not in the money form but in something that you have invested you created this for you created us to, to see this come full circle so allow us to be the voices that people need to hear just allow them to walk into this next so this talent can go into this next thing because we're not supposed to hide them. We're not supposed to, to keep them silent. We're not. We're supposed to move in this mighty way. So Father, be with this church. Be with Awaken. Be through us all, each individual, as we come together to be the church because Awaken is a movement. That's what we want to be. That's what we want to create. We want to move people to their next. We want to move people to this new life yeah. all through your power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us this boldness. Give us your truth in a huge way. Give us your voice so clearly we know clear direction. Paint these lines. Glide up these lines so we know exactly where we're going and we need to go. I know you only do that in increments so, because the biggest picture is going to scare us and intimidate us. But you light our way so we know where we're going and how to get there. Thank you for the big visions that you have given for all of us who ha have received a big, bigger vision. Just keep pouring into this so we can light up the world for your next fire move in a mighty way through the power and through the name of Jesus.
Amen. I kept thinking about that scripture when you said light the path is, you know, he is a lamp unto my feet. Yeah. I love that. And one of the big things, the season of light, lights and everything else tomorrow is our prayer vigil for Summer Wales. We're meeting in Rogers. What's the park's name? Tell me real quick. Crockett Springs Park, I think. Crockett Springs Park. Yes. And we're going to be there. And, and, and speaking of riding the way, it's going to be a candlelit thing because we believe, God, you are our way maker, and you light up these paths. And that's what we want is this path for to summer to be clear, to be known for people. So that's what we're declaring in this, this beautiful ceremony that we're going to be doing. It's just an a expression of our faith and say, hey, we're believing you. So you're going to light her, summer's path home, and you're going to light our path to find her, to the people, the authorities yeah. to find her. And it's all symbolic, and it's a beautiful picture, and we're excited for the sliding of the candles, the sliding of the way. Even the authorities are coming, too. Like I think so, the TBI is coming out tomorrow, I think, and stuff, so... Be in prayer for that too. And if you can't join us in person, please, please join us online. Yeah. We need and, we need as many people to pray this summer as much as possible. An awesome thing. You can get your own candles and you can do a beautiful ceremony in your house with your own family, your friends, your dog, your cat, your ferret, your goldfish <laughs> item. <laughs> you just bring them all. Bring some family around you. We're gonna pray. We're gonna believe God for a miraculous move. So we're excited for that. Be praying for us. We need your prayers. Now, I know uh, for me, it's, my schedule this week's been hectic, and I need to set some time aside tonight to really pray to you, to God, and search Him out for, especially tomorrow, for His guidance. Everything. So be in prayer for us and for the waking team here. Yeah. Amen. So uh, we always love to end on some closing thoughts, closing prayers. Uh, Timmy, do you got anything that uh, you want to close us out with? Um, I don't have anything right now. Okay. <laughs> Leah, how about you? Um, I just want, you know, I just want y'all to stay encouraged. Um, you know, don't let your eyes see you or your ears absorb the light. That's uh, something that the Lord told me in 2007, which basically means don't believe everything you see and don't take in everything you hear. You know, keep your eyes focused on, on Jesus. Stay in the word. Stay prayed up. Um, and and if you're not a fasting person, I'm going to encourage you to start fasting. Even, oops. There it is. <laughs> even if it's uh you know just one meal or maybe you you fast um phones or, or, TV <laughs> or you know something that is taking more time um you know that you could give back to the lord uh, and just pray about that because there's there's so much that he can do when when you sacrifice for him um, so just keep the hope, keep the strength, keep plugging along, um, because it's all going to be worth it in the end. Amen. Amen. And guys, like I always say, I love you all, and you can help get these prayers out there. That's the big thing, is that we want more lives to be influenced and changed through what's happening here. We need it to go out. You all get to be the ones getting to spread this message. You all get to be a part of this tribe. You all get to get this word out. So that's exciting in itself. You all are what makes this possible. You all are the heartbeat behind all this. I know it's Jesus first, and for all of you all, the, the super spiritual people out there who would call me out for it later, but God is putting all of y'all in these places to be the impact. So, yeah, just move in a mighty way and help us get this word out. You never know how, who it's going to impact or who it's going to speak to and who's going to, who it's going to communicate to. So just get it out there. Share, 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 and invite people back next Wednesday. We do this every Wednesday. It's how we're fighting our battles. That's how we should be fighting our battles in the prayer room. But love Amen. you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. And have a blessed rest of the night. Blessed evening. <laughs> See y'all tomorrow.